guy who becomes king. What a story. This is just half of it. It's full of action, adventure, uh, intrigue, and murder. A uh, few things about the story that I think you will find interesting. Uh, first of all, you, they, uh, you would think that killing the entire household of Ahab is, is extreme. And of course it is. But you have to remember that the influence of Ahab and Jezebel was extreme. They had taken over the entire religious uh, tone of the country of Israel, turned them to the worship of Baal. Now they were in Judah and they were doing the same thing. Uh, that's in future stories when we talk about Judah and how the influence. You see, their, their, their goal was to kill the entire family line of King David. So God said, you won't do that. Instead, I will destroy your family line. Uh, you might think Jehu wasn't very excited about being anointed king. He just went back to his friends and tried to act like it didn't happen. Well, you kind of have to understand what was going on there. In that day and age, uh, like most ages, if there are two kings, if a second person is declared king, that's where the line is drawn. Someone has to die. Someone has to be killed. Jehu knew this. At this point, it's all secretive. It's in a house, just a young prophet. He ran away, gave him a little chance to think about this. But his friends pulled it out of him. As soon as they hear that he was anointed king of Israel, they were in favor of it and shouted it from the rooftops. Uh, Jehu at this point, uh, and put it in my words, is saying, well, now you've done it. <laughs> now you've done it. Don't let anyone get out of here. Uh, the scripture says, don't let, any, any, don't let anyone escape. It was more like, don't let anyone out, because uh, he did not want anyone going to tell the king what had just happened. Jehu knew that his only chance of success was the surprise element. He worked that and he succeeded at it. Matter of fact, as you'll see in next week's story, the, the surprise element works with him over and over again as he takes over that kingdom. This story, uh, you have to remember the story of Naboth and how Ahab stole that vineyard. Uh, this story right here fits in perfectly with that. Uh, if you recall, uh, Ahab wanted the vineyard of Naboth, which was outside the palace walls. He wanted to destroy the, the vineyard and put in a garden there. Naboth said he couldn't do that. Well, Jezebel worked it out where uh, Naboth was accused of treason and found guilty. And because of that, his land went to the state. She was able to give it to Ahab. That's when God said, that's enough. You've crossed the line. No more. You will die. All of your descendants will die. They'll be eaten by dogs and birds. Well, Ahab repented and God accepted it and said, okay, okay, it'll still happen, but not in your lifetime, but in your son's lifetime. And that's, what, and that's what brings us to, to Joram here. Now, the ironic thing is this, is that when Joram left the city of uh, Jezreel and went out the city walls and rode towards Jehu, they met on the property of Naboth. <laughs> God has a way of working things out. Soon as the king died, he said, now take him and take him over there to where, to where Naboth's vineyard used to be. Let his body rot. Now the, uh, the story of Naboth, uh, Ahab, Jezebel, Jehu, it all fits together. But we're going to continue on with this story next week. So come back next week when we give you some more insights on the story of the week. We'll see you next week.